Going Low is a series that I love. Season 3 in particular has had a lot of strong and memorable episodes, and I hope that this one is no exception. A lot has changed since the series started. You can tell from the wooden doors in this video that it was recorded a long time ago, as I was part of a five-man team, so no players were harmed in the making of this episode. JFCC and Balthazar have been in this series before. As does Monkey frequents my channel a lot, and Hayugami was a mapper for the Stanley Parable. The Minecraft bit was his doing, the legend. I ended up splitting this video up into five acts, which all had their own project in Vegas to make things more manageable. Development of this video started over half a year ago with Act 1, which is the introduction sequence. This shows the terrorist team blindly rushing down mid, getting shot by an auto sniper and repeatedly passing the bomb back to the person behind until it ends up on the ground. Just like the new intro, this one was scripted. I hope that this is obvious. These intros aren't meant to show actual gameplay, but are instead supposed to encapsulate all of the annoying and silly things that tend to go on in matchmaking. There's even a laggy guy leading the charge and blocking those behind him. He was played by Pink Freud, a Brazilian YouTuber. It took us a lot of attempts to get this sequence right, so thank you to everybody involved for being so patient. There's a silver lining though. It's not as though we're repeating it over and over again and hoping to get lucky. With every take, the actors get better at their roles. More little things get added to the script and the timing gets better with every attempt. With this approach, it's inevitable that we'll eventually get a performance that we're all happy with. In reality, I spliced footage from several different performances together, so you'll spot small continuity errors like the way that the guy at the back tosses the bomb on the ground, which Level pointed out when previewing the video. But I don't care, I think that this intro does its job well. No doubt it will be compared with the previous Nuke intro, which I suspect is better in some ways, but I'm also happy with how this one turned out, and it's still better than I could have hoped for. The second act is a long, slow motion clip of a guy falling and dying in a game on cash. I was originally going to use a lot of different ultra slow motion flybys of recently killed people whose bodies were still falling, but after I saw this beautiful shot on cash, I made this one clip span the entire sequence in a single, long shot. It was taken from a game between Copenhagen Wolves and London Conspiracy during the Cologne 2014 tournament. This sort of shot wouldn't be possible with my normal recording methods, so I used HLAE for the first time in going low in CSGO, since these recordings remain super smooth even when the action only spans a couple of ticks of in-game time. Once again, it turned out better than I could have expected, but later on I added the vent breaking to make the transition between the intro and this sequence less jarring. It makes sense, since these tunnel sequences have been used throughout Season 3, and it's now coming to an end. The third act shows the majority of the gameplay. Before I start with it, this stage always looks like it will take forever, but once I get around to doing it, it's normally done in a matter of hours. I watch each round several times, choose which ones are best, then record those from numerous camera angles and splice them together to make a coherent and entertaining sequence. I normally know how I want to film them, but sometimes I replace them with a different style later on. Half-Life Advanced Effects is a very powerful tool, but it's important to use it in moderation. At first, I used it to create smooth flybys for almost every scene, but with hindsight, they felt cheap and gimmicky. I kept a few scenes in, like this one here, but most were replaced with still camera shots that have been used throughout Season 3 of Going Low in CSGO. I feel that this bit of the video goes on for a bit too long. I could have removed a few of the rounds shown here since we ended up repeating some of the earlier ideas, but hey, it's nearing the end of the series, so what the hell. I would have loved to have included clips from within the game itself as it was being played, but unfortunately most of our voice comms weren't picked up in my recording for this one. The next map's a lot more lively. Act 4 is a flashback and I suspect may disappoint people since it's more of a factual account of the updates that Counter-Strike Source had, rather than lots of personal stories. I have no way of topping what I did for the Season 2 finale. Back then I wanted to make the best video that I could and used all of the best stories I had up then. I'm not sure if I got the right feel across in this episode though. I moan about how Source didn't get many updates, yet show all of the wonderful new maps that they introduced in the first year or so of its release. I should probably have stressed that most of the time that I spent on this game was after this point when the updates had started to dry up, but oh well. Hopefully it's still an interesting bit of the video, and once again, it goes on for a little bit longer than I'd usually make it, but why not? And finally, Act 5 is the last two rounds that I originally filmed for Act 3. It closes up this game and sets it up for the final video of the series. That's right, I'm going full Harry Potter by splitting this final episode up into two parts. There are lots of reasons. I wanted to get an episode out, this project was big enough on its own, and if people aren't happy with this episode, I have another chance to make this season's finale something special. This is important to me, since Going Low in CSGO is a series that I'm very proud of. I try my best with every episode to top what I've done before, 
not just when compared with previous Going Low episodes, but with the quality of my videos and narration in general. The new intro was recorded in HD at 240fps, but for this one I instead filmed at 4K and at 60fps. Don't get me wrong, recording at 240fps has its advantages. It leads to very smooth motion blur, but this, combined with YouTube's low bitrate, makes the end result appear very low res and, well, blurry. Compounding the problem was how I only shot it in HD, which is fine normally but I used a great deal of zoom in the sequence, making the end result closer to standard definition in quality. Recording in 60fps instead means that there's only one very clear frame for each refresh. Combined with 4K, this intro has a very crisp look to it and once you upgrade to the higher resolution monitors, you too will see the difference. But even with HD, the 4K option on YouTube will still up the bitrate, making things look far clearer than usual. But that's just the intro. Most of this video was only recorded at 2560 by 1440 since 4K requires fraps to capture it and it quickly eats up countless gigabytes of storage space. 2560 on the other hand can be easily captured by shadow play, but even then only at 30fps so I had to capture the gameplay at half speed and then double it to make it appear at 60fps. I've said before that I dislike this resolution. 4K is a big enough jump to justify but until I upgrade my graphics card I'll have to settle with 2560. One advantage of which is that it lets me zoom in a bit and still retain full HD quality. The downside of all of this is that it slows my PC down. Editing at 1440p at double speed is bad enough, but 4K is downright painful. When previewing the video I only rendered it in HD to save time. I then pieced these 5 rendered segments together in another Vegas file, added the music and effects and used this to produce the final, entire video. Only once it was finalised did I render these individual 5 segments and the final video in 4K a process that took about 7 hours in total. I feared the upload stage, but Handbrake has made 4K uploads very manageable for me to achieve, even with videos that are over 10 minutes long. Running the final 46GB file through Handbrake got it down to just 2GB while still retaining superb 4K quality. The most time consuming thing was when I uploaded it to YouTube and it flagged it for using a song found in Counter Strike Source. It took me an extra day just to change this bit, to re-render and to re-upload. With this video, any sort of time management went straight out of the window. I don't expect this video to be worth the time that I've invested into it, nor will the gap between the previous video released and this one do my channel any favours. The whole project was over 100GB in size and took me hundreds of hours to perfect, but why bother with all of this when HD would have taken a fraction of the time and hardly anyone would notice the difference? Well, I take pride in what I do. I want people to be able to look back at this episode in years to come and to think, wow, it still looks pretty good. Plus, pushing myself like this forces me to find solutions that make me better at what I do. From this project there are a lot of useful tricks which should hopefully make all future videos of mine better, faster and easier to make. I made the 4K intro for this video in July last year, at which point I was all like, how am I going to upload a video of this size? Now it's possible, and using Handbrake, no harder than uploading a similarly length HD video from before. But I know that there's a lot more to video than the video quality. And I worry that this episode will disappoint a lot of viewers who think it's just a load of people who stood still and getting shot by the other team. I wanted this episode to be darker than previous ones and to feel almost… helpless. But feedback says that this episode doesn't have enough action, that it's too slow paced and that nothing funny happens. I didn't even see it in this way until I got feedback from friends, but I can see where they're coming from. With season 3 I've tried to make each episode unique, both in story and in style. The last thing I want is for this series to grow stale or old. But changing the formula every time runs the risk of people moaning that I've changed what they liked about previous episodes. I'm proud of this one. I think it's more mature than the old ones. My narration is less irritating and I'm proud to use this video to represent me should somebody ask what I do on YouTube. For saying that, I wouldn't be happy ending the season on this episode. It lacks the emotion and finality required. My last Game Making Journey episode did a good job of concluding the series and I'll try to make the next Going Low episode equally worthy of the honour.